This is Candle Wait Talk. Minute, Thank minute, you for tuning please. in. Let's get right into the show. But before we get into the show, don't forget to check out our website, sylviaexpress.com. Hey, fabulous people. Okay, so this is the Wednesday show, and I'm going to be doing the Wednesday show a little bit differently than normally, and I'm going to make sure that I do try to do it every single Wednesday and Saturday, try to do a show summarizing basically what happens in the week, but don't hold me to it. <laughs> Just please don't hold me to it. Okay. Just kidding. But anyway... Man, things are out of control for the imposter. A recent story broke about him having an affair with a porn star while he was married to Melania. Now, let me reiterate that part. A recent story broke about him having an affair with a porn star while he was married to Melania. Now, here is an excerpt from a Think Progress article. I don't know if you ever heard of Think Progress, but they have pretty good articles. Okay, so basically, this is what it says. On January 12th, basically 2018... The Wall Street Journal reported that Trump, through his lawyer Michael Cohen, had paid Stephanie Clifford $130,000 one month before the election to buy her silence about an affair she had with Trump in 2006. Clifford is an adult film actor who performs under the name Stormy Daniels. The affair allegedly took place shortly after Trump's third wife, Melania, gave birth to his son, Barron. So after she gave birth to their son... The imposter of the White House decides he's going to go have an affair. Wow. Anyway, with a porn star. But anyway. But nobody should be shocked that a thrice-married adulterer cheated on his wife. I don't think anyone was mystified by that. Right? Like, I don't think anybody was like, oh my God, Trump is an adulterer? I don't think so. But the fact that the alleged president of the United States had an affair with a porn star is of significance. Okay? It is of significance. It's not just that he cheated on his wife that had just given birth to their child. It's also who he cheated with. Who he cheated with. But nevertheless, Stormy Daniels revealed a whole lot about Trump that completely undermines like this fallacious tough guy facade that he tries to present. He's a typical emasculated man that pretends outwardly to be so masculine and dominant because things aren't actually big at all. They're just really, really, really small. Anyway, and Stormy said a lot, which I'm going to get into in a minute. But here's a clip outlining what happened and why this is becoming a scandal and why this is basically damaging to Trump. So here's a clip. I'm going to play it. And then after that, I'm going to talk about it. Here it is. The president is facing new scrutiny tonight over accusations of hush money paid over a sexual encounter with a porn star. The Wall Street Journal reports President Trump's lawyer paid Stephanie Clifford, a.k.a. Stormy Daniels, $130,000 just before his election to keep quiet. The encounter allegedly took place at a celebrity golf tournament in Lake Tahoe in 2006, a year after he married Melania Trump. Now, that same lawyer told the Journal today that both the president and the actress continue to deny any encounter or payment. The White House says this is an old recycled report which was published and strongly denied prior to the election. Okay, well, part of the problem here is that Stormy Daniels actually allegedly is under a non-disclosure agreement, so she essentially can't come out and basically confirm or deny basically what transpired. But nevertheless, there was another porn star who was on Megyn Kelly who actually confirms what actually transpired between them. I'm going to play the clip right now so you can hear that, and I'll talk about it after this. Here it is. So it's dinner. The discussion came up. Join me later. Have some fun with us. And then uh, we retired to our hotel room, myself and the other young lady that I was with, and that's when Stormy started calling me. So initially the phone calls were normal, you know, we're, I'm here, come hang out with us, but it was just Stormy calling me. And um, like I said, I had another young lady that, that wasn't exactly invited, and when Stormy's telling me that she's hanging out with Donald, um, there's a lot of things that... that come into play in a situation like that because of who he is. Now, granted, this was 2006. He wasn't president. There was nothing in the foreseeable future at that time that looked that that was going to be the future. And so um, the calls kept coming. This is the calls from Stormy. From Stormy. Who, at this moment, you believe was with Donald Trump in his hotel room. Yes. Inviting you to come join them. Inviting me to come join them. How was she describing the event to which you were being invited? that it was just them. There wasn't a lot of description, but I was able to understand that there was not anyone else there. And what did you what did you feel she was inviting you to do? Well, when she started calling me again and then Donald was on the phone, 
and I can hear him. Let's get to that. So then she calls you back. She calls me back and um, I'm stalling because I'm trying not to go. I can't get rid of the girl that I'm with. She's kind of, she's great, but she's had a little too much to drink. And so um, I'm trying to kind of avoid the situation. And so as Stormy is continuing to call and now Donald's on the phone, it made it a totally different situation. At that point- What did he say? Come hang out with us, come have fun, let's party. And so- did, did he know that you were an adult film star? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I'm sure they had conversation because I was being invited. Okay, so basically what he was basically trying to do was have a threesome with this other porn star with this porn star now that allegedly he paid hush money to. That's essentially what she's saying right there. And then In Touch Magazine publishes the, 2000, uh, the 2011 interview they had with Stormy Daniels, which is the porn star behind the scandal, before she signed the non-disclosure agreement. And here are some of the excerpts from it. She says, it all started at the American Century Celebrity Golf Tournament in July 2016, 2006. Excuse me. Trump was introduced to everybody. He kept looking at me, and then we ended up riding to another hole on the same golf cart together. Okay, so the golf cart president, the golfing president, was riding with her on a golf cart. That's not hard to imagine, is it? Right? Okay, anyway. She said, adding that the business mogul later came to the gift lounge her adult film company, Wicked Pictures, sponsored and asked for her number, which she gave him before they posed for a photo together. Then he asked me if I wanted to have dinner that night, and I was like, yeah, of course. Um, Stormy dressed up to go out on the town, arrived at the Trump Hotel room, where she says she was greeted by a bodyguard named Keith, who let her inside. Stormy claims Trump was sprawled on the couch watching TV wearing pajama pants. He had a little baby, baby president. Anyway, he wasn't a president at the time, but he's still a little baby. Anyway, we ended up having dinner in the room, is what she said. At one point, she excused herself to go to the bathroom. When she, when I came out, he was sitting on the bed and he was like, come here. And I was like, ugh, here we go. And we started kissing. After having sex, Stormy said, we hung out for a little while and he just kept saying, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. I have to see you again. You're amazing. We have to get you on The Apprentice. Okay. And then Raw Story, I don't know if you've ever read Raw Story. Raw Story said this. It said, um, they put it on an article today and they said this. Daniels reportedly told Weisberg, I guess was one of the people who was a reporter at um, the Wall Street Journal or the New York Post or somewhere, but a reporter, Weisberg, that Trump was in was bad in bed. Okay, let me say that again. She said that Trump was bad in bed, um, though in not so many words. She in, in, intimated that her view of his sexual skills was at odds with the remark attributed to Marla Maples, um, stating that she had had the best sex I've ever had. So basically, she's just basically saying, uh, no, nah, I'm sorry, I don't understand how it's the best sex you ever had because what I had was garbage. Okay. And then also, it is alleged that Trump once compared Stormy to his daughter, Ivanka. He said she was beautiful and smart like his daughter. Okay, so he bangs someone like, that's like his daughter. I mean, we all speculated after his comments that he made about Ivanka that she, if she wasn't his daughter, he'd be sleeping with her. But we didn't think he'd go to a porn star to replicate his daughter. I mean, it's just like sick as hell. So you go sleep with this porn star. If you think it reminds you of your daughter, would you go ahead and have the relationship anyway? No, that, there's nothing There's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing whatsoever wrong with that. Right, guys? Nothing wrong. Okay. And then Fox News. They had this story before the election, and they failed to disclose it. Here's a clip outlining what happened with Fox News. Here it is. Cohen, Clifford, and the White House have denied the report. The allegation of the relationship was no secret to Fox, though. One of the news re network's reporters, Diane Falzone, had filed a story in October of 2016 about an alleged sexual relationship between Clifford and Trump, people familiar with the matter said. Now, Falzone had an on-the-record statement from Clifford's manager at the time, Gina Rodriguez, confirming that her client had engaged in a sexual relationship with Trump, three of these people said, and Falzone had even seen emails about a settlement. But the story never saw the light of day to the frustration of Fall Zone, to the people who uh, were familiar with the matter had said. She had the story and Fox killed it. One of the people familiar with the matter told CNN. So, Okay, so Fox News basically had the story and then they kill it. Can you imagine if CNN, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post, you know, all of these, the Daily Beast, any of these, all these um, alleged liberal outlets had buried the story? Can you imagine what Fox would be doing? Fox would lead every program talking about it like the liberal cabal is at it again. 
This is why we say you should only listen to our lies nightly and no one else. Just listen to our lies. We're the only one who tells lies that are so obviously lies, right? I mean, they would never let it go if that happened. And this is a big story for many reasons. First, if Trump paid her off, then he must have been afraid of something that she would disclose, right? You don't pay somebody off if you're not afraid of what they're going to disclose. But you paid them off without her even suing you or anything else. You just automatically paid her off. Clearly, you were afraid of something being disclosed. Second, this affair confirms just how depraved Trump is and how much of a farce his marriage is to Melania. That good old marriage he claimed to have Melania. Melania said, oh, we great, we great, we really great. That's a lie. We know that's a complete and total farce now. And the first lady is being humiliated because this imposter in the White House had an affair with a porn star. Okay. And then third, if he paid her off, then it shows he has the capability to pay people to be quiet. That doesn't bode well for him while he's under investigation for conspiracy. Okay, so that doesn't help you when you're constantly lying about certain things not transpiring when it's proof that you actually... Things actually did probably transpire, but you paid people off to keep quiet. So when these people are coming out and saying, no, it didn't happen, no, it didn't happen, who's going to believe it when it's obvious that you have the capability of paying people off? Then finally, if this is true, then the alleged president of the United States, a man alleging to be a Republican, has further destroyed any ounce of morality left in the Republican Party. There will be ads about this affair if Dems get their act together. There will be excerpts of her interview juxtaposed with family values rhetoric by the GOP. These are the kinds of stories that make Trump untenable for the GOP. They only they don't care about his racism and stuff like that because it doesn't affect their base. But scandals like this do. While they won't lead to like impeachment or 25th Amendment, as they don't meet the requisite grounds, because you have a scandal um, in an affair with a porn star doesn't mean that you should be impeached or they should invoke the 25th Amendment. But let's face it. Trump has been pretty much Teflon on claims like this, but even John Gotti eventually went too far. You just think about it. A porn star and the president. <laughs> Can you imagine the documentary? The porn star and the president. I'm like, wow. I don't know if that kind of story can protect the imposter in the right house or protect the GOP, especially from those hard religious right individuals. So this story is of significance, and honestly, the media should be hammering this story more. Okay, I'm going to talk about a couple other things, Steve Bannon and Jeff Flake. And let me just get into Steve Bannon real quickly. No, Steve Bannon is not refusing to cooperate. Please only listen to credible interpretations of what's transpiring. Bannon said he would fully cooperate with the investigation by the House, except for any questions relating to executive privilege, only because Trump's lawyers have precluded him from doing so. However, Bannon did, did this deliberately. He wants to be subpoenaed, subpoenaed, which he has. He's been subpoenaed by Mueller. He's been subpoenaed by the House. Because that insulates him from later being accused of volunteering information as opposed to being compelled. I can assure you that Bannon will spill his guts to Mueller and likely doesn't feel compelled to cooperate with Congress because they typically are spineless and they don't know how to get recourse. People fail to cooperate so many times with Congress during this in Russian investigation and Congress did absolutely nothing. So he probably looks at Congress and says, you guys are a farce and you're a joke and I don't have to do anything um, to listen to you guys. Um, but he's pretending that he's only going to do what he must do by law, which is a complete farce by him, too. He's, that's not what he's doing. He's doing what he wants to do. He's pretending like like he's only going to do um, what, he, like, you know, what the law basically tells him to do. But he's itching to spill the beans on Kushner at a minimum. I mean, it's a smart strategy. He can allege that he was only trying to save the MAGA agenda. That's why he spoke up in the Fire and Fury book and other times that's why he spoke up. But when he realized that his comments may lead to criminal inquiries, he never volunteered at that point to cooperate because his agenda was never to hurt the imposter in the White House. It was just to save MAGA, the MAGA agenda. But then when he realized, you know, oh my God, this is, this is a criminal inquiry now, let me get out of it. And then those Trumpers who will eventually abandon the imposter in the White House will be hailing Bannon as a hero. While Bannon was still able to do the maximum amount of damage to Trump by giving him, giving testimony to Mueller under the premise that it was compelled testimony, not volunteered testimony. And it looked like he only did it because he didn't have a choice. It's a simple strategy. No one wants to be handed, um, you know, for a, 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 excerpt or something else that says that you 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 betrayed the imposter in the right house and no one wants to be branded as a judas even if you're scorned you don't want to be branded as judas so that's why he did it. he's cooperating trust me and he's going to spill the beans 
So don't worry about that, no matter what the mainstream media says. And then there's here's another thing. Jeff Flake. Okay, people keep talking about how courageous he is. Let me be honest. Flake isn't noble, courageous, convincing, or respectable simply for standing up, stating the obvious, but continues to enable the imposter in the White House. He votes over 90% of the time for Trump nominees and policies. He believes that history will protect him from the condemnation because in retrospect, people will play his speeches rebuking Trump. He doesn't think that history will remember that he took absolutely no action to even slightly curtail the recklessness of the imposter in the White House. However, I will only remember him for his spineless capitulation to the most enraging, erratic, uneducated, bigoted president in modern history. His rhetoric is hollow without action. If he believes the imposter is this fundamentally bad and undermines the Constitution he was sworn to uphold, then he should take action. But instead, he perpetuates only weakness. People are hailing him today as the one who stood up. How did he stand up? Is the standard so low for Republicans that all they must do is state the obvious and then resume regular duties and they deserve praise? Hit me up when Flake substantiates his rhetoric with actions. If he thinks that the imposter undermines his oath of office by attacking the free press, then do something. Otherwise, stop wasting people's time trying to get remembered in history books. So anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Don't forget to go to sylviaexpress.com. Once again, it's sylvia with a y, express.com. Check out our videos page. Um, and on there, there are videos that I post that I don't post anywhere else, but on sylviaexpress.com. And I will see you guys on Saturday, unless something major breaks, and I might want to do a show in between there. But I will see you guys on Saturday, unless something major breaks, like I said. Don't forget to go to sylviaexpress.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is a different brand of Wednesday show. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, guys. Have a good week.